Hello and welcome all, my name is TRSF 2.0 and welcome to my Sonic Origins review and I know I'm a little late by like a week, week and a half but still, happy belated birthday Sonic and I can't believe we actually got another classic for collection <laughs> I just gotta say uh I'm not against the classic games, far from it. But, um, you know, I'm just saying, uh. Where are my 3D collections? Give me my 3D collections right now! I'm serious, Sega! Where are my 3D collections? Give me Sonic Adventure, Sonic Unleashed, give me all of that black! <clears throat> Sorry, I got a little side check. But besides that, yes, we got another classic collection. And this time, we finally got the port we've been asking for the Christian Whitehead ports. And of course, the Sonic 3 port that was created by Headcanon, one of the teams that helped out, or that actually made Sonic Mania. So, what to say about this port? Or collection, I guess? I like it. I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I actually like this collection. I don't know why I keep saying remastered. I mean, I have a problem. I mean, I kept saying remastered because of Sonic Colors Ultimate, but now it's collection, so I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Uh, anyway, uh -huh. so yeah. Uh, it's been a while, but yeah, we finally get in these games. I must say right now, if I did not like these games, I wouldn't have dedicated over 10 to 15 to 20 hours on my Nintendo Switch just solely playing this collection. Because I will admit, it is a fun time. Sure, it has its issues here and there, but I can say that, yeah, if you want to buy this collection, buy it. It's, it's worth the money. Even though I'm not gonna lie, the digital deluxe is kinda lacking because, you know, the things they did in the digital deluxe, you could've add that in the normal game. So I don't understand why. Because what they're showing in the digital deluxe, it's not anything special. Literally, it's like so bare bones. They're showing you can do, oh yeah, um, island controls, you can control the islands that were created using the hedgehog engine, which is the same engine that's being used for Frontiers. So, seeing that we're able to use that on Nintendo Switch or any console, I think that Frontiers, the engine they're using, is pretty good, even though this is a discussion for another time. But you know, it's nice to know these things. But anyway, that's a little bit done for my opening there. And now it's time to discuss each game one by one, and also what the collection has to offer. So without further ado, let's talk about what the collection has to offer. Alright, so for starters, once you open up the game, you're greeted with a nice title screen with the logo and a press start button. And then when you go in, you see all the three islands created with the hedgehog engine that I add. And you just look at it from first glance, you're like, this collection looks like it was really well made. Until you realize that you see on the bottom, for some people, not for all, basically sits downloadable content. The way they marketed this game is kind of iffy. They kind of had some uh, EA price charting. And I'm just like, why do they have to do this? It doesn't make any sense. And so, basically there are two versions. You got the normal version, which is basically the base game. And also mirror mode, which we'll talk about later. And you also have digital deluxe which gives you that extra bonus content if you don't know what digital deluxe is usually it's basically the dlc but it's like in one package basically the main game plus dlc for an extra price and in my opinion i got the digital deluxe this is nothing really game breaking or game changing that will make you want to get digital deluxe i mean sure the 3d islands look cool and all but then again those are things that should be put in the base collection, don't you think? It shouldn't be locked behind a paywall. I won't say that's the same thing for Sonic Colors, but they did that too. Like you have to pay extra money for like extra music tracks and, and extra cosmetics, even though you're not really spending real money 
on the coins and stuff in that game so it doesn't make any sense I appreciate though the coins here because a lot of people are skeptical thinking that they're gonna add microtransactions I'm glad that the coins are microtransactions and that you can actually use them for the special stages which I suck at by the way I'm just saying right now Sonic 1 special stage is like awful for me and Blue Spheres I, I didn't grow up with Blue Spheres I honestly grew up as a half pipe kid so you know Blue Spheres was pretty difficult for me first time so I had to use the coin a lot and also the fact that you need or when you get digital deluxe that you get a hundred bonus coins and you can let you go into debug and let you just spawn as many coins as you want I don't think that's really such a good rep for you to do most of the stuff that's in digital deluxe should be in the base game and shouldn't be locked in a paywall especially because they added extra music which for some reason, they even got the extra music wrong. They added Knuckles Chaotix, Sonic 3D Blast, and I think Sonic Spinball. They got some of the Knuckles Chaotix music wrong. Uh, I think like one of the most popular ones during the summer. They got that wrong with Midnight Greenhouse. And I don't know much of Knuckles Chaotix, but I went to Midnight Greenhouse, and that music wasn't even correct either. But you know, it, a lot of things have been going on with these games lately. So, you know, I just hope it gets patched out, stuff like that happens. But yeah, once you're in the game, you're basically greeted with a few options you could do. Either play the main games, story mode, which is basically the main games, but it's in a continuous story. Or, you can do mission mode. Or classic mode I don't really want to talk about so I'm gonna just say this really quickly classic mode is useless you don't need classic mode literally it's not even an authentic experience it's literally just anniversary mode but it's in 4x3 and you have lives I guess that's cool but this could literally just go off as 4x3 mode like literally anniversary mode that's all you really gotta play classic mode it's just a slap to the face to the real classic generation fans. So, I honestly, classic mode, I didn't really play classic mode, I just went to anniversary mode. And that's just me. In my opinion, the museum is nice, but, you know, th they could have done more. They, they did the most bare bone things. Even the premium collection, it's literally just a bunch of animatics. And for the illustration, it's... Not even, it's not that much man, it's really not that much. The music, like the premium section is like a laugh, it's just a laughing stock. Like you gotta, cause apparently in the premium section you gotta pay like 5 coins to unlock a single piece or whatever. It's not even worth it, it's just bare bones stuff. For the videos it's just an animatics, and for the illustrations it's just a bunch of sketches. And for... The sounds, it's just sounds from Sonic Generations or some other modern Sonic game that had classic uh, Sonic stages. So yeah, I don't really count that much of the museum. The museum is nice and all, but I don't know. It's just not feeling it. It, it, they, it looks like they didn't put a lot into it. Like to do with Mega, Mega Collection. And a lot of people know how Mega Collection did, so. That's just my take. Uh, boss rush is pretty cool too. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the best at the Sonic bosses, but hey, if I can get far enough, that just shows that I'm improving, getting better at uh, the old platformers. Mirror mode, yeah, I don't know what to say about mirror mode. It's just you know, it's very uh, interesting to say the least. It's literally just the game backwards, strippy. Could be fun for some, but for me, it's eh. But anyway, that's all for basically what the game has to offer. Now, let's talk about each of the games individually and see how this port enhanced them with this release or collection.
Now, the first game when you enter this collection is none other than the notorious Sonic the Hedgehog 1991, also known as Sonic 1. Now, what do I have to say about this port? It's alright, I really like it. The only downside I have with this port, or with this version of Sonic 1, is that, um... The drop dash is butchered. Like, I swear, I cannot understand why Sega couldn't fix with the drop dash. Yes, I know in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, like, especially in the Christian Whitehead port, because all these ports are the Christian Whitehead port. Yes, it's all widescreen, all stuff like that. But when you add it in the spin dash, basically, you're not able to use it freely. If you're in one, if you're like going one way with the spin dash, you basically stay that way. So it's not like fluid and free like it is in Mania. Or basically you use the drop dash you go you can go either way so that's my only nitpick with this everything else yeah it's it's a pretty good port and especially the coins I love the addition of the coins because now you're able to beat the special stages freely because I'm not gonna lie Sonic on special stages I do not like I, I don't know just that whole maze thing it's just it's not my forte and having the drop dash is nice, but like I said, it's butchered, so, you know, it's okay. Not the best thing since sliced bread. But also, the opening cutscenes is also a really nice trait to have, too. Because now people can understand what's happening in the games, rather than just going in, not even knowing what's going on at all. Even though, if you know, back then, you were actually know what's happening in the game, because in the manual of the game they would actually explain the story there this applies for all of the classic games they would explain the story in the manual so yeah I think this is a good addition I still think that they could add a more cutscenes and stuff to tie in everything together at the end but for what we have it's a pretty good port it's in 60 f well 30 fps on switch but for the most part 60 fps 30 frame um, smooth gameplay smooth controls and it's in widescreen which we're finally getting i'm not going to talk about classic mode so screw off <laughs> but yeah it's in widescreen so it looks really good but yeah that's all i have to say about sonic 1 there's not much about the port it's just your average christian whitehead port of sonic 1 and they didn't really do that much that changes it it just still looks really good now and not gonna lie my favorite stage is labyrinth and uh uh another nitpick i have is that the music, I don't know, it just sounds, it sounds so low a bit. Not like so low, but like, you can sound like the effects are louder than the actual music itself. Because I remember when I was playing live, I had to turn up the volume on my TV just so I can actually hear it. Because the sound effects were louder in some cases. But besides that, yeah, pretty good port. I'd give this port a 9 out of 10. If it wasn't for the nitpicks, could have been a 10. But besides that, let's move on to the next game. Alrighty, so the next game we have on our list is Sonic. <laughs> you thought, you thought, you thought we we're gonna do Sonic 2, didn't you? <laughs> uh, you were mistaken. We are actually going to talk about Sonic CD. <laughs> Oh. Alright, so Sonic CD. There's not much I really have to say about the game. I'm not gonna lie though, I do love Sonic CD. It's probably my first favorite game in this entire collection. One, the music is so cool, the visuals so nice, the past and future mechanic is also pretty nice, I like it too. Especially the future one, because the music just be bumping. And unlike the first game we looked at, Sonic 1, the drop dash is actually really functional, and it's not butchered, thank god. And also, because this is a question why head port, they even give you the option to choose between the Japanese and the US soundtrack. Me, of course, I picked the Japanese soundtrack because... <laughs> okay, I'm not doing that again. But, um, yeah. I chose the Japanese soundtrack because it's just 100% better. And also the cutscenes this time around. For those who didn't know about Amy's tarot cards, 
if you didn't read the manual back then in 1993, of course you wouldn't know what her tarot cards are. So I thought that was a really nice detail for what they did there. Besides that, yeah, I think that CD is a good pour. I would honestly give it a 10 out of 10. Mostly because of the music. I'm a simp for the CD music, like seriously. But yeah, I didn't really run into any issues with CD either. I bet it was pretty much a done and done deal. Beat the game, it's over with. And that was a pretty fun playthrough too. And I will say the special stages though are kind of eh. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a while to get all the chaos from this because of the freaking UFO special stage. But besides that, yeah, it's a fun experience. I would recommend playing CD in the collection. That's like my most functional and best one in that entire collection. So yeah, I'd give CD a 10 out of 10. Probably the best port in the entire collection. And I would further ado, now we can get on and talk about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. No, not the movie. I already did a review. You can check that out. Uh a few videos back I'll, I'll link it somewhere here or probably in the description but no we're gonna be talking about the game Sonic the Hedgehog 2 you know from 1992 so without further ado let's talk about Sonic 2 all right now it's time for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 no not the move oh I already made that joke anyway released in 1992 this was actually the debut of our sidekick, or Sonic's best pal, Tails. And oh my god, did I not like him in Origins, so I'll tell you that much. Now, what I have to say about um, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the port is alright. It's, it's your normal Christian Whitehead port back then from the mobile port days. And uh, what I do gotta say, I really enjoy the cutscene this time around because like I said again you guys gotta look into the manual to see what's going on with the story and seeing that how Tails was being bullied by the other foxes for having two tails I think that's pretty that's a pretty nice set of details it shows how Sonic and Tails became friends and I think that's really sentimental and now what I have to say about the actual game it's pretty fun I'm not gonna lie Sonic the Hedgehog 2 it's definitely above so the others is probably my favorite Sonic classic Sonic game because I've played it the most obviously and um because if you heard me earlier I said I'm a half fight kid and the special stages from Sonic 2 are the hype fat now um one or a few things I gotta say about this version of Sonic 2 that stands out from the rest of the ports we've gotten over the years is um of course everything looks really amazing 60 i'm sorry 30 fps and widescreen finally you get to have that on modern day hardware but the only concern that i really have is that um tails yes tails yes i know in sonic 2 you learn the spin dash and all but the same but they did the same thing they did with sonic 1 and basically the the drop dash is butchered again yes i know i really keep stretching on this one but yes the drop dash is butchered again it only if you're in one direction it will only target that one direction unlike sonic cd and unlike sonic 3 all right got it good now what i really want to talk about is tails his ai is trash seriously i remember and i'm gonna show some clips as i talk literally when i'm just walking around and just chilling and i'm trying to go fast i can't really go fast because if i lose tails i'm basically having a nightmare because he's just gonna keep jumping his ai doesn't despawn normally Shut up, tails! and no this doesn't happen in the other ports this is just an origin thing origin this is literally he only does this in origin you can try any other version of sonic 2 you won't be hearing the same point 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 you will not be hearing it so that's like my only real nitpick for sonic the hedgehog 2 because the tails ai is trash i don't know what they did i don't know what they broke but that ai ain't it because he despawns terribly but lucky for you even though i'm kind of late with this review i have a way that basically helps him despawn faster so if he's no longer out of your sight and he keeps jumping uh i want what you gotta do is you gotta hold up and then just keep jumping and that will trigger tails to fly it will trigger the ai to fly 
as he flies he basically will despawn and go back to the player faster yeah it's pretty crazy how i figured that out but nonetheless i hope that somewhat helps with your boink 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 problem then again it's only gonna last for a good few seconds you're gonna be hearing a lot of bad despawning in this game but besides that the story is good uh it's no, thanks to the coins, it's oh my god, it's really easy to beat. Uh, what's the word? To get all the chaos emeralds before you get the reach chemical plant. It, like seriously, especially if you use the chi or basically you just keep restarting the game after you get a checkpoint. And in my opinion, that's way too overpowered. But hey, at least I got all the emeralds. Like I've got all the, the secret ending. But hey, it works. So yeah. What I gotta say about Sonic 2, uh, 7! I give it a 7, even though it's my my favorite classic game though, uh, Tails ruined it for me, he just straight up ruined it for me. So yeah, I give this for a 7 out of 10. And uh, anyway, um, yeah, so now it's time to talk about the main game that stood out in this collection. All right, now it's finally time to talk about Dinner, 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 dinner. Oh, come on. All right, so released in 1994, here lies us to the great game or the great game from Purgatory, Sonic 3. Don't forget and knuckles. But let me just quick a quick quick backstory because I'm running low on time here. So basically, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is basically a two-part game. Starting with the first part, which is of course Sonic the Hedgehog 3, and then the next part, which is Sonic and Knuckles. Why are they separated? I don't know. I'm guessing it has something to do with they weren't able to finish the whole game in time, so they decided to split it. So that also explains why they have the lock-on technology. Which is honestly pretty wild for some people back in the day. But I'm not here to talk too much retro. I'm here to talk about how it plays in Sonic Origins. And how does it play? Well, uh... It plays okay. I will say right now, huge shout out to the people at Headcanon that made the port. Uh, basically everything else was made by Sega internally. So if anything bad I'm saying about the game, don't blame me at Headcanon because they only really worked on Sonic 3. And I'm not really blaming them, I'm blaming the people higher up, the people at Sega that were like looking over the people that made the changes after Headcanon worked on the port. Besides that, yeah the port's okay, the music is uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But besides the music, I did run into a few collision issues, I'm not sure if I saved that footage, but I did run into a few collision issues. And also, the drop dash works really well here too, so that's a plus. This is my first time beating Sonic 3, so uh, I am sorry that it took me so long to freaking beat it so I could actually make this review. Which I am sorry again in advance that it took me forever to make this review, I apologize. But anyway, um, so yeah, everything else is pretty good, but besides the music, yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a good port. I actually like it. But um, what's it called? Uh, Blue Spheres? Yeah, <laughs> those also took me a while because I didn't grow up with blue spheres. So um, yeah, that's another reason why this review took so long because I was chaos emerald hunting. I wanted to get that good ending. So uh, shout out to the coins for actually helping me reach that goal. All right, so now that I've talked about all the positives, it is now time to talk about the negative. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, something happened that I just want to mention up real quick. So basically when I tried to turn into hypersonic, uh, something weird kind of happened and it basically went to like, um, how do I say this? Uh, I tried turning into him as I ran and for some reason it was in flying battery. It just didn't go through until the sparkling kind of, um, it kind of broke when I actually turned into hypersonic. I just want to, uh, you know, bring that out there. I'm not sure if I have the clip or not, but if I do, I will add it into the video. Now. On with what I actually want to talk about, and that is the music. Alright, so 
So, uh, let me give a quick talk about the music in Sonic Origins. In almost all the games, all of them are pretty alright. My only problem is that the music is butchered, and I don't mean soundtrack wise. Like, here's a fun fact. Did you know that in, I only know for the Xbox version of Sonic Generations, you are actually able to play Sonic 1 on it? And the audio is botched as all heck. Yeah, bet you didn't know that one. And if you did know, I mean, good for you. But if you didn't, well, now you know. My problem is that Origins is supposed to be a remastering collection of all these classics together. And, you know, seeing the audio so botched in this remaster that we were supposed to get, basically remastered for all the classics, the fact that the audio is butchered and this is supposed to be a quote unquote remaster, it's not really showing it a lot. And so that's my big nitpick with all the games in Sonic Origins. But since we are now talking about Sonic 3, my biggest problem, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can agree with me on this, is the music. What the heck happened in Sonic 3? Like, I swear, it's like, they just had an idea. They're like, alright, so, if we can't afford the rights to the Michael Jackson music and the Jeff music, what are we going to do about those stages and origins? I mean, if we use them, we have an opportunity or we might have the chance of getting sued and I'm pretty sure we don't want that. So what should we do? And then you just see that one important that's like, oh, I got it. Alright, so, we're all going to do this, alright? So basically... We're not going to use the Michael Jackson just to use, but instead, we are going to... Uh... Remake the prototype music from the ground up and make it more botched than before? What the actual heck, Sega? I... I, I don't understand. Like, seriously. So, if you didn't know, um, the music that they used apparently is from an older PC collection of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which was known as Sonic and Knuckles. It had Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles, respectively. And they had these MIDI recordings of the music with them before they got Michael Jackson and the Jetsons to work on it. So, what happened after that, recently what we found out is that there was a 1993 prototype of Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and it had some really good music I'm telling you and for some reason I don't know why Sega couldn't just thought why don't we just use the prototype music I mean it definitely sounds better than what we have now but I don't know I guess someone higher up was like nah these butcher versions are a lot better but yeah keep going but yeah, like, I'm gonna just do a comparison of like two stages that a lot of people were affected by this change. Honorable Knight and Ice Cap. Because seriously, what is this? I don't understand. Why do you have to change the soundtrack? Uh, I'm gonna just, I'm, I'm gonna let these two play for themselves.
I just... Okay, look. I'm just flabbergasted. They could have used the prototype, or they could have done anything else. But seriously, what they did here, I just... I don't understand. Plus the supersonic music, too. Why? Why did they have to change it? It literally reminds me of Sonic 4 all over again. And I don't want to be reminded of Sonic 4. I really don't. But besides that, yeah... That's pretty much all I have to say about Sonic Origins and all the games in general. To be honest though, if you're on PC, I recommend playing the fan-made recreations of the mobile port, since that's basically what Sonic Origins is. So, uh, ports or remakes like Sonic 1 Forever, Sonic 2 Absolute, Sonic 3 Air, Sonic CD Decompilation, it, I'm sure you're gonna find some enjoyment in those if you find some enjoyment in Origins. Am I saying not get Origins? Oh, nah, no, definitely not. But, hey, if you feel like this isn't what you wanted in a remastered collection, then yeah, don't get Origins. It's all up to you at the end of the day. But, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for Sonic Origins. And, um, again, uh, sorry this is so late. Um, a lot of things came up and uh, a lot of setbacks happened too. But I finally got it out, and don't worry, I'm gonna get my videos back up and running in no time, and I promise you on that. But anyway, that's all from me. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take it easy, everyone. Peace out.